Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday with Robin and Terry. We made it through another week. We did it. This one was hard. <laughs> it's tricky. It's okay. You know, we can do this. It's not that bad. And we'll come out on the other side stronger and better for it. We won't take things as much for granted, hopefully, anymore. No, but I'm stuck in the studio forced to draw. Yeah. <laughs> How terrible. We hope everyone's safe and well and staying at home. Lots of crazy things are going on out there. So, um, listen, you guys don't listen to anybody, but the I'm just going to give you my little personal opinion here. Churches are starting to say they're going to meet again. Beaches are starting to open up. It's way too early for that. You guys don't need to listen to those crazy people. Don't pay attention to those circus performers. Just listen to the medical professionals. They're the ones leading the charge against this virus. We have to stay home, stay home, stay home. Personally, I've been getting a lot of cleaning and cooking done. I love the cooking part. My next batch of limoncello will be ready in two weeks. She makes her own booze. Can you believe that? Hey. And it's good. I mean, I don't drink, but even I know it's good. It is good. Yeah. Are you going to sell that? We could market it and sell it. No, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to drink it. I made and everything. She puts it in bottles. It has a label on it and the top and everything. Gives it out to friends. It's good to be friends with the ramen. <laughs> okay, so enough of my limoncello. Uh, not surprisingly, there's not much news on the comic book front this week. With Diamond closed, we're waiting for POs and deciding what to print and what can wait. So we're just going to kind of put everything on hold until they gear back up. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll be here when it all shakes out. So we're trying to take it a day at a time and make good decisions for later on in the year. Um, we have canceled all of our European trips for the end of the year and we're gonna be staying in the US, hopefully doing some shows that uh, we weren't gonna be able to do because we were gonna be gone, so. We're kind of hoping that the shows uh, are rescheduled and a bunch of them happen at the second half of the year. So uh, if that happens, we're all over it. Yeah. Yeah. So Terry is finishing up five years this week. And as soon as he's finished with that, he's going to start posting sketches on say, uh, for sale online in our store. So uh, he'll let you know when that happens. So keep an eye on the social media. But that's what he's going to be doing for the next couple of weeks is... Um, Sketching. Draw. My plan is to draw. Just draw. And we're still able to send mail orders out because we set up a little mini warehouse here in the studio and we're just filling orders from here. Yeah, I had to move my guitar. It's a it's a little bit cozy here in the studio these days, but... But I'm surrounded by all my stuff. It's working out. Yeah. And I talked to our comic book shop and they are also filling mail orders. So be sure to check with your shop and... See if they can send you back issues or books you've been meaning to read. Um, and now you have the opportunity. Oh, man. I bet they can. Uh, every shop I know is really selling books like crazy right now and happy to just send them to your door. So. Okay. So do you have anything else? Um, in the general world, no. My plan is to draw my way through this. Okay. Well, let's get on to our questions. Okay. Okay, the first question, uh, when developing a new character, do you begin with a sketch or do you work out the character's personality first? Uh, that's a good question. I've, I think when it, when it was, I would have to say that I'm drawing the sketches first because I'll draw a sketch and then I'll get a, a doodle or a face that I like and um, it captures the imagination and then I draw another one, another sketch of that. Um, one thing I can remember, it's hard to remember Kachu and Francine, but I remember drawing a polar bear one time that I really liked, cartoon polar bear sitting on an iceberg and he looked lonely. And I just thought it was a charming drawing. And I spent the next few months drawing polar bear cartoons um, because of that one drawing. And I've seen a lot of people, you know, with notebooks full of sketches uh, and they're doing all these different faces and they'll go out in public and draw people that they see in the, t on the square. <laughs> well, not now, but... Um, and that's where you get ideas, you know, you'll find a face that captivates your imagination. So you sketch first and then develop the character. Yeah, and usually it's our, I'll see somebody's face and it intrigues me and then I start thinking 
my imagination runs wild. What if that person's a CIA agent, a CIA agent or whatever? You, you, you make up a story in your head and then you put it together with your doodles and uh, there you go. You're off and running. It really is kind of like a recipe. It's fun to do. You have to let your imagination go. You know, just uh, picture your next door neighbor and imagine that at night they, they do the wildest thing. You know. I don't need to know that. <laughs> I do not need to know Your that. Your comic book writer Especially needs to Especially right know. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like for instance, one time I had to draw, uh, write a, a story for DC, and in my script, I realized it was uh, The Birds of Prey. And in my script, I had that um, in the satellite belt that Lex Luthor Corporation had put up a bunch of satellites, and they had been adding to them. Um, they had enough up there to make a network to cover the globe, to do whatever Lex wanted to do, hold him hostage or control the weather or whatever. That's just letting your imagination run wild. That's not practical at all. Where does that come from? So, you know, that's you take somebody like Lex and think about oh, what wild thing would they do? Now you have a Lex character, you know? Okay. Makes sense? It does. Okay. Or, you, or you could just have a dog who sits out in the yard and thinks profound thoughts. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Okay, question number two. Okay. Your style from the first sip comic to the last changed dramatically. Yeah. What do you attribute this to? Growth. Just growing as an artist. Um, when I started, it was very cartoony, and that was the goal, was to draw cartoons. But I wanted to be better at it, showing their the realism of the moments that were... Uh, emotional so I started drawing a little more detail into the face um, and actually you know what that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in today's art lesson um, how you go from uh, let me use a, a, an you example a prop. Here. I have a prop <laughs> how do you go from you know Venus to Milo I've got her in a little uh, it's cold out today how do you go from Venus to, you know, Kachu? And then if you can get from realism to, you know, Strangers in Paradise, then how do you go from, this is Chris Sanders, wonderful character. How do you go from Strangers in Paradise to cartoon? You know, so it's, there's only one degree of separation between Venus de Milo and Chris Sanders' wonderful cartooning style. So I thought maybe we'd talk about you know, drawing women today um, and blending all this style to make your own. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chris, for letting me use your wonderful figure there. So, um, if you don't have anything else, you can set up for your tutorial. Absolutely. Meet me here. Okay, you guys have a great week. Stay home. Do something fun. And we'll see you back here next week. Okay, so today I thought maybe we'd talk about um, drawing, how I'm drawing women, uh, how I'm, what I'm looking at, um, what my goal is when I'm trying to draw my version, I guess. So I thought maybe it would be a good way to start is just to look through some of my sketches. Um, to, yeah, I've already told you about you know how I measure things off and everything. So now it's about the look. You know, how do you, do you go for a realistic but basic look? This is very Steve Rude right here, um, channeling that master. Um, do you go for stylism, um, where you're? It's all about what you leave out. Um, do you go for Cartooning, you know, um, this is more actually, I don't know what that would be, what level of realism that is for a cartoon strip, but it's a cartooning style. Um, and I think if you look at a lot of different of cartoons that I've drawn, you begin to see some common elements that I basically go for cartoon expressive eyes. Um, just, I just need the nose as a uh, place guard, just a placement. You just need to know there's a nose there, unless it's a big cartoon nose. Uh, you know, I'm just leaving out the details, like wrinkles, um, shading, 
light sources, none of that is on here. You're going for the outline of the figures. And you can base those outlines just a little bit off of your um, your quick sketches, you know, just your quick figure sketches. Um, it's easy to take one of these, blow it up, put in the details of the face and the clothes and all that, and, you know, you quickly get to a cartoon drawing. So, I, to show you what I mean, look, you can... Picture going from, say, that figure sketch right there to this cartoon girl here. The, the only thing missing is the details of, um, you know, the eyes, the, the, the hint of a nose, the mouth. I didn't put much work into making the features of that face from there. Um, so this really is... A terrific starting point is just to at least start with the body language drawing um, that gets you in the right pose then flesh it out if you look at this as a um, where's my pencil this is the simplest drawing I well these two are the simplest drawings I have this really is just a body language pose, a quick stick, stick figure. Sorry if I'm bumping the camera there. There, you went from that to that. It would take about one minute to go from that to that. Um, same with this girl here. You've got the head going forward, the neck coming back a little bit, and slump shoulders which is uh, code for loser <laughs> when you're doing that pose. Oh, life has beat you down. And then the unsteady legs. Like, I'm barely standing up because life is hard. And that's the what the body is telling you there, you know, as opposed to standing erect like a proud soldier or something. Um, once you have that in your head about what you're doing with your bodies uh, and then the faces, the heads on top, you can tell that the uh, features are can be as rough as this. You know, it, there really is no detail work going on in this face, but at least you have a face to build on. You can go from there to there real quick by building in the, the, the expressions. Here's a good example of that. So here's body language that, uh, you know, here's a basic pencil sketch that has been fleshed out. You know, you have the curve of the back, the shoulders. And now it's about line where the uh, anchor points are on the body. Like that. That looks like the head is back. That would be a whole different pose if somebody was doing that. But no. We're going this way. How that head sits on the neck has a lot to do with the attitude of the uh, person. Uh, right now, this person has a certain attitude and a personality. If you were to change the tilt of that head, um, maybe these shoulders aren't back so proud, change the weight on the hips, the whole thing changes its personality. Um, the simplest thing you can do is just simply stand up, right? But this figure has a heck of a pose here because it's got a power pose. Straight shoulders, chin up, like that. You can tell that, you know, if we were to finish this out as a drawing, um, you would have an alpha female. It, it happens so fast when you get the alpha, the beta, the winner, the loser. It happens so fast in the drawing. It's already set right there. Just one egg shape, then the, the tilt, the, the way the head sits on the neck, and then the way all that is positioned on the shoulders. You think it doesn't move, but it moves constantly. It moves as much as your arms. and this already has an attitude. Because I see this and I 
from the shape of the head, I can see looking this way. So with the head back like that, we have we we are trained to think, are you taken aback? Are you giving something a second look? Uh, is this going to have a raised eyebrow here? Like maybe this person is leaning back to look at you over the back of their table mate, right? <laughs> See what I mean? And maybe they're gesturing to you or trying to hand you a note. Here, take this note. And the note says, run. <laughs> so, I mean, that was established so early in the deal. And this could, this guy, this woman, we're drawing women today. <laughs> this could be the, the person who notices. And maybe this person is the waiter. So, I mean, that's how you get, I could, you know, turn this into a character, give that character a name. Now you have a story. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show you these cartoons real quick. Uh, just to show you that uh, the, this, the initial sketch, the uh, that little rough sketch matters. Where is it? Here it is. So you, this is important. You start with this, get your attitude. I don't know if that person is saluting or about to have a case of the vapors. Um, I don't know if they're yelling for help or celebrating yet. That's in the detail, but you have a body doing something. The second thing that's really important that I wanted to point out, do you notice in all these drawings something that they all have in common? All these figures, these, these women, the female body, um, uh, you know, all the way down to the most cartoony thing that I have here. There are no straight lines in the female body. There are no straight lines. There isn't one. Even if you think you have a straight line, like an arm, here's an arm. There's an arm. That's not a straight line. I'll show you a straight line. There's a straight line. Look at that. See what I mean? There are no straight lines in the human body. Because everything is organic and molecular and cellular and all that. So even when I think I'm drawing a forearm with this line, look, I came out. I came out and went back in because there's a muscle there. You know there's a muscle there. And on this one here, it's actually doing a con you know, a concave. And then there's another concave right there. Well, I'm saying, what's the opposite of concave? Out cave. So there's an in cave and an out cave right there to get that arm to come out like that. Um, and the reason is because there's a muscle tied right there and there's another muscle tied right there. And that's where they build up the fattest is because that's how they do their thing. The toes, round, feet, round, the, all these legs, everything going on is round. I just wanted to point that out because it's important. And even when you get into more finished drawings, uh, like this old cartoon that I did of uh, Space Girl, not a single straight line in the bunch. If you look at it in detail, it actually is just a bunch of uh, round lines. I, I can't even, I'm looking and I can't even find one. Also, let me point out that there really isn't any much more detail on this face than there is on this one. Do you see that? I still did the nose. All I did was put on the lower lid. Get a little more serious with the eyebrows. change that mouth to do the cartoon mouth 
like that. Now change your hair. And give her these, um, this dark hair that we were looking at. Do you see it starting to form? See it? All I have to do is, you know, fix some of the exaggerations that you do use with the cartoon, pull it in to be a little more realistic. I think that that's the leap that I made as a cartoonist to know how I got from drawing, you know, her husband, <laughs> that simple cartoony face with the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And then you just, it's the details that you add on to it. When do you stop adding details? When you stop adding details is when you've decided what your style is. So you go from here where you're drawing just, you know, the most basic line you can just to get these expressions. And you get to Francine and Cachou, this Strangers in Paradise style that I ended up with. Um, if this is still the same cartoon face, the nose that, you know, the same little perk nose that I know, the eye, I went from being a big cartoony eye down to a little more realistic, but there's only like three or four lines in there. And then the mouth, I just put in a little more detail about the lips. You know there's teeth in there because that's happening. And there, there I mean, it's just, I'm trying to show that going from cartoony to realism is not a huge leap. And when you go from that, you start inking, it looks, you know, like, this looks so much more sophisticated than that. But they are exactly the same thing. There's not much more difference. It's just a little more detail in uh, the line of the nose and the mouth. And then pull the eyes back down so they're not quite so cartoony and expressive. See what I mean? It was in the it was in the just the details of that feature right there. Everything else was already there in the cartoon. And that cartoon could be broken down to as simple as the stick figure that we started off with probably just a minute ago on that cartoon. You know what I mean? This is how it is for the artist, for the cartoonist who can see this stuff, who can see the leap from here to here to here. And people say, I can't even draw a smiley face. I bet you can. I mean, you can do that, right? And then you add long hair and it's, it's a woman or a hippie guy. <laughs> it's whoever they want to be. We shouldn't be labeling. But there, we have a human being with long hair, a very cute human being. It's not hard to go from that human being to that to that human being. And then if you add just a little more detail, you get Art Nouveau, -y, you know, and now you're back into the illustrators at the or start of the 20th century who were drawing these heavy line weights and reducing the faces down to line drawings. And you could give this to any colorist with Photoshop and they can put in the color tones and this would look hyper realistic all of a sudden, especially if you let them color it and then take away my line drawing. Um, then you have a painting and it was that easy. That's how you go from Venus to Milo, right? Which is kind of that. You go from Venus to Kachu to Cartoony. Thank you, Chris, again, for letting me use your beautiful cartoon character. But that's the leap. That's how it works in my head.
that's how I draw women. That's how I think of it. So um, I bet you thought I was going to talk about how to draw all these uh, areas and stuff that people are focused on uh, with the female body. And um, I think that you have to get this down first before you start diving into stuff like that. So first draw human beings that with no straight lines, make your leap from cartoony to stranger in paradise to realism, stop off at any stage you want to, and that's your style. Um, just draw and have fun, man. Because I gotta tell you, just drawing and changing drawings and just searching for whatever it is you're looking for in drawing, it's a blast.